Okay, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we continue with the first section of the Aqidah uh, Tahawiya. If you remember from the previous lesson and the previous video, uh, Imam Tahawi uses the phrase "Wa ma yataqiduna min usul al-din" in terms of what they believe from the principles or the foundations of religion. Right, that's the phrase that we have. And just to remind ourselves, this is part of um, a longer paragraph where Imam Tahawi is talking about three particular scholars in the Hanafi school, Imam Abu Hanifa himself and his two students, uh, Muhammad Shaibani and Qadi Abu Yusuf. And he's talking about how um, this is the foundation of the religion in terms of um, the, the Aqidah. Now, it's interesting, he uses the word min usul al and not وَمَا يَتَّقِدُونَ مِنْ kalam or, or so forth. And we're going to go into that. Or by why he, why he doesn't use the word kalam. Because often when we talk about theology, we use the word in Arabic, kalam, right? So he's going to explain uh, perhaps a little bit why they may have used, or Imam Tahawi may have used the word usul al-deen as opposed to ilmul kalam. Let's dive straight into it. So, وَمَعْنَى الْإِتِقَادِ مَضَى So he says, we've already talked about what itiqad means. Um, and I shared with one of our colleagues uh, elsewhere in the Quran where the word itiqad or aqt comes, right? This is in the context of the Prophet Moses, uh, which I can share the verse uh, later on as well. And that's talking about a particular speech impediment that he had as well. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about the context of that. So it's contextual as well, but here we're talking about theology or creed. So usulu din, usul as you know in Arabic is uh, the asal, like the principle, the foundation. So Imam Tahawi is using the word usulu din, um, and then he kind of has a little bit of a linguistic or grammatical discussion, which is that usulu din is what's called a murakkab izafi. Murakkab basically means it's made up of a number of words, if you like. In this case, it's made up of two words. So when there is a, 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 a genitive construction here, um, which you're saying, if you translate it into English, you're basically saying the foundations of religion. If he just said foundations, it, what does that mean? But when he says foundation of religion, the author has something specific in mind. That's why he used the word alam. Like when you, when you do this in English as well, grammatically, when you say, you know, the house of Harun, then you're not talking about any house. You're doing izafa, you're doing nisba. You're saying basically it's the house of Harun, right? So usul din is similar here in, in the way it operates. We are talking about the foundations, but the foundations of religion. Right? That's why it's called a murakkab. So it's this construction that you have. In, you have this in English, you have this in Arabic as well, and, and many other languages as well. So, li'ilmin makhsus. So, this is talking about makhsus. Makhsus means like a specific science, a specific knowledge, right? Um, and so, this is something to bear in mind as well. And uh, just in the footnotes, before we move on, um, the, 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 the person who compiled this book um, actually has some interesting discussions in, into why it's called uh, Ilmuddin, uh, and so forth, or usul al-deen. But before we do that, let me just move on with uh, the this text here. Innahu ilmun yubhathu fihi. So what are we talking about when we say usul al-deen? Because we're talking about the foundation of religion. What is the foundation of religion? What is the usul of religion, right? So he says, innahu ilmun, it's a knowledge, it's a science. Yubhathu, yubhathu uh, comes from the word bahas, which means to discuss. Right to have a bahas buhus to discuss things. So it's knowledge that discusses pertaining the names of God, asma Allah, the names of God. Uh, may He be elevated. His attributes, His sifat. So we're talking about God and His names. We're talking about His attributes, wa afali and His actions. So that's the first thing that we talk about when we talk about usul deed. But also we talk about a number of other things as well. So wa ahwal makhlukin makhluk is the creation uh, of God, their states. So for example, min al-mala'ika, including the angels, the prophets, the awliya, uh, saintly people or saintly, uh, saintly beings, and wal-a'imma, 
and also to do with the imams. We'll talk about imams and who the imams are in particular. We're not talking about the mosque imams here. We're talking about specific imams here. We'll come to them later on. And then he talks about things to do with wal mabda wal ma'ad. Mabda bada'a, which comes forward to begin. So here we're talking about specifically, because it's specifically about the creation. That's the creation of, um, the beginning of creation, how we came about. Wal ma'ad. Uh, um, to it literally means to return. So in Arabic, we use the word ma'ad. In English, we would translate this as the afterlife because it's the return. We're going back to the source, if you like. Um, and uh, in terms of what the qanun, the qanun of Islam are, the word qanun is very interesting for those of you who want to do some work, work because qanun, uh, the word we have in English is canon. And I believe this has the same root. It actually has an Arabic root. I might be wrong. If my memory serves me correctly, um, the word canon actually comes from qanun, right? And that's something you might want to check out and you can put in the comments afterwards. It's qanun islam um, And he says, we're not talking about the philosophers. We're talking about religion here. So la ala usul hukuma. They used to use the word hukuma for, uh, for uh, it, one of the ways that they would talk about the philosophers is the hukuma. And what, what, why do we do this? Tahseelan lil yaqeen. Because we want to gain certainty. Yaqeen, as you know, is to gain certainty. Fil, fil aqd al imani wa daf'an li shubhad. Because we want to gain certainty when it comes to binding ourselves to our faith and also to removing shubhad doubts. Right, and the scholars mentioned that as a as a believer, if you have doubts, it's important that you speak to qualified people, scholars, and remove those doubts that you may have in your faith. Right. Let me just go back a little bit because here in the footnote we have something very very interesting, and he says that ilm usuluddin, what's been used by Imam Tahawi, it has different words. There are synonymous words that are used. Some people call it ilmu tawheed. So you'll see the knowledge of tawheed, divine unity. It's also called ilmu kalam, as you are aware of. And we'll talk about that in a few moments as well. Um, and he says, Imam, Imam al-A'zam is referring to Imam Abu Hanifa, as he mentions in his Fiqh al-Akbar. This is a very important text. Um, it's been translated into English as well. So he, so he gives a few definitions that scholars give alongside the one that we've just gone through. In essence, we're talking about things to do with belief, things to do, you have, things to do, with, that, things to do with matters that one must believe in, at least at a basic level as a Muslim. So to believe in God, to believe in his creation, uh, to, to believe um, matters to do with his creation, to believe about things to do with the afterlife, to things to do with our, our, our creation in this world. And, and so forth. But let's look at what he's saying here, because these are like different definitions scholars have given. And this, so again, this is an academic discussion in terms of what is ilmul kalam. But if you go through some of these definitions, my hope is that we'll get at least some notion, an idea of what ilmul kalam or usul al-deen or ilmul tawheed is. So he says, ilmun yaktaridu ma'ahu ala isbad al-aqa'id diniya wa daf al-shuha anha wa izam al So basically what it does, is that it affirms your faith, it binds you to your religion, it removes doubts, and it kind of, you know, it's it's a way of uh, making your religion firm, firm, firm for you. That's kind of like what Imam, he's saying Imam Abu Hanifa mentions in another text called Fiqh al-Akbar. Ibn Khaldun uh, also mentions, Ibn Khaldun's mentioned here, he says it's a, it's a knowledge which includes argumentation pertaining to faith, uh, belief in uh, and faith, with rational um, proofs, right? So it's a rational, it's a rational enterprise as well. In this text, we don't really go into it too much, but in advanced texts of Akida, uh, scholars do rush, do, do use, deploy rational arguments for, for substantiating a certain uh, point, an article of faith as well. And he says, وَالرَّدُّ عَلَى الْمُنْحَرِفِينَ And to refute, the word rad means to refute munharifin. Munharifin comes from the word inhiraf, and this is sometimes used for um, uh, pe people from the Christian tradition who have changed by the Bible. But he is referring to people who uh, try to alter uh, the Quran or religious text, filitiqai, people who try to cause changes or confusion in belief. Then he mentions another scholar, Muhammad Abdu. He mentions that it's knowledge which discusses the existence of God, wujud uh, of God, 
and what is um my yajibu and yes what what is like affirmed about god from his attributes and what is uh what is permissible to um attribute to god right and what 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 is important to negate regarding god and then about his prophet and what is uh, and what he is upon what is what is what pertains to his prophet and what what we can attribute to him and what we are not uh, allowed to attribute to him it continues so here you have an extension it's to do with god as well and his attributes which is what we've talked about before but here the prophet is also included in this as well and you'll see later on in aqida tahawiya after we've talked about allah and god we'll talk about prophethood and the nature of prophecy as well in musayyara is also mentioned that uh it is to know about the self what pertains what pertains to you in terms of your aqida right in terms of your faith with proof so it's not just like in aqida tahawiya he in the actual text itself he doesn't actually give proofs often he'll just say this is what we believe um but as you progress because it's a pedagogical text so when you first start learning aqida you you do like something like aqida tahawiya but as you advance you start going into uh arguments about which prove the existence of god so whether that's from the quran from the text or whether you can bring in you can bring in rational arguments as well so we'll talk about that maybe in an advanced lesson at some point in the future and then he says um this is to do with ahkam of sharia which are pertaining to faith so we're doing we 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 we're not doing fiqh here we're doing things to do with belief and things to do with ilahiyat divine divine matters prophecy things that we have received in in terms of um uh in terms of transmission i.e. from the quran and sunnah and also to remove uh doubts i'll stop there because you get the idea that this is matters to do with faith matters to do with god his attributes things to do with salvation things to do with prophecy uh and to remove doubt, doubts you get this idea that kalam or usulud din or ilmul kalam is interested if you like in these matters <clears throat> and then he kind of here he mentions this already is the same same sort of conversation we've just been having that sometimes usul ad-din is also called ilmul kalam and this is what's used most often like most people nowadays don't talk about usul ad-din uh, they use the word ilmul kalam which is mentioned here so he gives a number of reasons and there's there's there's, there's like a whole host of reasons as to why it's called ilmul kalam but our offer here um, offers three reasons right? why is it called ilmul kalam right why is it called the science of speech because kalam um, means to talk to speak right um so he says that um a number of reasons number one is that um this is something so here لأن, لان اثر مساله تكلموا فيها وتقاتلوا عليها في مساله الكلام فسم فسم النوع باسمها that um the things that the scholars used to discuss and debate and even fight over is the question of god's speech right and this will come later on in aqidah tahawiya in terms of this very famous debate that happened um it wasn't even a debate it was um it was quite serious actually people people were punished um it, it became very political about god's speech um but we'll talk about that when the time comes and so like there was this historically there was this huge uproar uh, early on islamic history about god's speech right like is the quran um the kalam of allah is the quran actually the word of god right the quran that we have is that god's actual spe- speech and uh, i mean now it seems like very reductive like why do you want to know that of course it's a god if god speech but at a certain point in history uh, it became very very controversial and we'll talk about this in 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 um in, in future lectures where it will come along so i'm just pointing towards that now so that's one reason it's called ilmul kalam because of this historic event that took place in in islamic history another reason they gave is that it's called kalam because um لان ظهور كمال الكلام انما يكون بيان حقائق وابراز دقائق so basically he says that you know the perfection of knowledge or perfection of speech rather can only be known um by explaining things right and revealing their finer points the دقائق like speech is a method that we have it's the way that we communicate with each other and that's the only way we know what we call ma fi zamir the only way i know what's in paul's heart or i can get an appreciation of what's in paul's heart for example is what he says to me right and the more clear it is the more distilled it is the more me as a listener is able to understand that but the only way he can do that is through speech you might say to me now that we have uh, whatsapp and we have other methods but this is what kalam is but it's still a form of speech 
right? And says, and he says that you can't get that except through knowledge, right? And like studying the science. You have to understand Kalam. And this is why Kalam theology is a lot to do with language, right? Um, so this is very, very important. So they kind of like use it metaphorically, if you like, majaz. And the word majaz means metaphoric um, as a form of exaggeration. Like this is like this is the only way you can know what's, what's, what's intended, right, by speech. So this is the second reason, just because this is what this is the nature of language, and it's very interesting because if you think about um, in the Quran, in uh, in the creation of Adam, peace be upon him, and when the angels, you know, asked the, asked God about his creation, he and he named everything. Adam right? He named these things. So there's this thing about naming things, being able to communicate, which is very special to humankind. Waqila. Um, and the third reason he mentions is that there were some people who completely rejected these things, right? Um, who rejected uh, al-aqliya, al-mabahis al-aqliya, rational investigations, and um, like using burhan. Burhan means like conclusive arguments, right? Um, and they said, look, we don't need to go into all of this. God said this, we just leave it. We don't need to get into it. Is that su'ilu and mas'alatil ta'allaqu bisifatila? Whenever God's attributes were brought into question um, the, and all his actions, and they would say um, that we've been pro- prohibited, anil kalam, we've been pro- pro- prohibited to talk about this, right? So can you see the word here? We've been prohibited to talk about this when it pertains to God. So uh, he is like an opposite reason, if you like, which is that, uh, it came about because a group of people said, "Look, we don't need to talk. We don't need to talk about this. The fact that we don't talk about it, we call it kalam, right?" And so it became, um, uh, and so this is like it became actually uh, very famous, and it, it kind of like kalam on its own um, just means speech, but it became so famous that when you say kalam now, it's become a proper noun in of itself, whereas linguistically it's not a proper noun. If you say kalam. Right, it doesn't have the kalam or the alif lam in Arabic. You, it could be any kalam, any speech. But it became so famous um, that you know when people like it became so. This is why language is very important. How it's used amongst people is very important. So linguistically, it's 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 it is a noun, but it's not a proper noun. But it's became a proper noun, become a proper noun because whenever you say kalam now, like everybody knows what you're talking about. Right, generally speaking, they'll know that you're talking about ilm um, of usul din Right, um, and then he kind of gives a number in in the footnotes. He gives some more reasons, which I won't um, I won't uh, you know uh, tease you with, or if you like, I won't uh, go into too much right now. But there are other reasons um, that, like I mentioned, that uh, we can find as to why it might be called kalam as well. So, if you remember, we said usuluddin, the foundations of religion, and so he's talking about uh, deen now. And deen has a number of meanings. It has a, quite a lot of meanings. And in the Quran, it's contextual. So you have to look at the context in which God is talking about, like any other language. So, but here he says here that uh, deen, uh, this is specifically used um, for divine kind of order, right? Um, that people who have intellect um, will, will go towards, it will drive those who have intellect towards good. So deen, like it's a way of, it's a, it's the way of God that people follow, people of intellect will follow towards good, and that is Islam, right? Deen is some people would say deen is synonymous with Islam, though they have different meanings. One of them is deen um, comes from the word deen, which is to loan something, whereas Islam is a verb, right? Um, here and Islam means salim to submit. In this particular verb here, it means to submit. So they do have different meanings, but people sometimes often use deen um, synonymously because if you look in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 19, God actually does that, in the deen, in the law, Islam, that the true religion with God is Islam, right? Um, and elsewhere, God says in uh, Surah Ma'idah, verse number three, وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ Madina, That I am pleased for you, or I've chosen for you Islam as your religion, okay? And he says the word deen can also have other meanings, um, which means in qiyad, like to submit, uh, to obey, to uh, recompense, 
recompense because the word deal, like I said, has this idea of loaning something, borrowing something, lending something out. Well, hisab. So religion here, um, we use the word religion in English, but it, in Arabic, it has a much more deeper philosophy. You can even philosophize what this means because God's given you this gift of life. And at some point, you have to give that. He will ask you about this gift or he's given you this opportunity. And at some point, he will ask about you. That's why Hisab also comes in as well. Um, so this is something that's very, very uh, in- interesting. And obviously, when you're in, in fiqh, in legal understanding, we use the word dain, right? Which is like someone's given you something to borrow. Someone lent you something, right? So it's also used in other, other contexts as well. Anyway, who's the mutadayin? Is a Muslim who is... Uh, who obeys God, who is happy, uh, and who knows that through his or her actions, there will be jaza, there will be a recompense, there will be hisab on yawmul mi'ad, the day of return. And he is the finest of God's slaves, right? And so uh, he mentioned this, So at the end of this introduction, Imam Tahawi also has this phrase, And that basically means that what they have submitted to, to the Lord of the worlds, right? They've, they've submitted themselves to God and they've taken Islam as their religion and um, they trust in God. Rab, Rab here means the Malik. Um, who is the, the sovereign, if you like. One one translation I like is the sovereign. Alameen is many translations. The one I pers- pers- personally like, which is not here, uh, Imam Razi mentions in his tafsir, is that everything besides God is the alam, right? Everything besides God is the alam, or everything that is in everything that exists uh, other than God, i.e. it exists because God brought it into existence. But anyway, um, he's saying that alam includes everything in the cosmos, it includes everything, everyone that has knowledge uh, from the angels and the saqalain. The saqalain, if you remember, is the two uh, creatures, which is the mankind and the jinn kind. Okay. Um, and so this is, and some people say that it's, uh, uh, alam is like, it's, it, it's basically everything that exists besides God. Like it's, it's, it's other than God. Um, so when we say in Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praises due to God, who is the Lord, who is the sovereign, who is the creator, the sustainer of everything, right? He sustains everything. Everything exists purely because God sustains it, right? Um, so now we've come to, we've, we've come to the end of the introduction of the book by Imam Tahawi himself. What we'll do in the next video is we'll go into something very, very interesting, which is called the idea of Tawheed, divine unity or monotheism uh, and so forth. So we're going to go into that um, in, in the next video. And this book is really good because um, the actual Arabic text, which I've mentioned before, is in Arabic. Uh, and I'm sorry, it's in Arabic, but it's very short. You can actually memorize it, and it, it, I mean, people w- would memorize. So I've memorized this text, for example. So you know, if you read, you can, you, if you read it, it rhymes. Then it begins. Can you see? So it's like it's beautiful. It's quite poetic. Um, and it's and it's and it's 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 written that way so that people can memorize it. And there's a whole discussion to be had about memorization in the Islamic tradition. I'm going to end there uh, in the next video, if Allah wills, God wills, we will um, continue with the text. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.